You're watching Unreal Ant Gaming. This is Gohan from Dragon Ball Z. You want to see me turn Super Saiyan? Or should I take it to the next level? I'm also the narrator, too. Next time on Dragon Ball Z, make sure and smash subscribe to Unreal Ant Gaming. The concept of Oob having to be introduced in Dragon Ball Super had been long introduced within the franchise following the manga and the anime, and ever since following the events of the Universe 6 vs Universe 7 tournament, with Vegeta and Goku bringing up the idea of recruiting a reincarnated Kid Buu onto their team to fight Champa's universe, along with Dende having to further remind Goku that in fact the reincarnation of Kid Buu does currently exist on Earth, and ever since taking a look at what happened during the Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc with the Daikaio and Moro, it was only then heavily implied that the reason why the Daikaio's magic failed against Moro was due to the fact that once Majin Buu ended up splitting into two, a part of his god power actually went into Kid Buu, and thus with Kid Buu now having to be reincarnated in the form of Oob, what does this mean for the character concept of Oob following the events of the Moro arc, and is there a good chance that we are going to be seeing Oob introduced fully in Dragon Ball Super with our characters anytime soon, or does Toei Animation and Shueisha have something deeper playing with the concept of Oob, especially when having to look at what the concept idea is following the events of the ending of Dragon Ball Z. As once more before we begin, if you are new to this channel and have a love and passion for all things Dragon Ball and anime related, then be sure to smash that subscribe button on this channel and turn on all notifications to never miss a single upload, along with giving this video a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below if you guys love Dragon Ball and anime. Now right off the bat, I'm going to go off on a limb and say that I don't think we're going to get Oob in the Galactic Patrol Prisoner arc. As a matter of fact, I don't even see them introducing Oob in the next arc either because I think that by the time they introduce Oob fully in meeting Goku, in meeting Vegeta, in meeting Gohan, and the rest of the Z Fighters, I think it's going to come a time where they're going to try and ease into the Budokai tournament just as we've seen at the end of Dragon Ball Z. And if you guys agree or disagree with this concept, we want to get your thoughts in the comment section below about when do you guys think we're going to get Oob in the story, and if you guys believe we are going to get Oob, then how are they going to introduce him? Is it going to be towards the end of Dragon Ball Super to where they connect that to Dragon Ball Z or vice versa? Because thus far, the way they're painting out Oob, he kind of feels like a mystery, and I'm not entirely sure as to if this is the right moment to introduce him, but joining me here today to further discuss the concept of Oob in Dragon Ball Super is my good friend and Dragon Ball YouTuber Emish. Now, Emish me and you both agree that I think Oob should be a part of Dragon Ball Super story. I think that Oob at some point should be introduced, if anything, to train with Goku and kind of reflect on the ending of Dragon Ball Z with Goku having to train with Oob. But what I wanted to know from you is, do you believe that this is the perfect opportunity or the perfect time to at least have Oob be referenced or at least involved in this current arc leading into the next? Because right now, we don't really know the overall plan or direction for the character, but when looking at what Oob can present in the overall story of Dragon Ball, do you believe that they're going to be saving Oob for a later time, or is this going to be one of those moments to where he could be involved, but not directly? You know, Oob is interesting. Uh, it's never really been someone that I'm fond of, but I think people want to see him. They, they, I mean, we've talked about him for quite some time. Originally, when the Moro arc started, when the Universe 6 arc was there for the tournament, like, Oob was referenced a couple times, and, you know, this idea of Kid Buu being resurrected was referenced a couple times, and people have been asking, when are we going to get Oob? When are we going to get to the end of Z and when is Goku gonna go train Oob and so on and so forth and you know there's been a lot of changes like you mentioned the, the lore is drastically different than, but then what we originally know it known it to be so now we're at this moral arc and the Daikao he has the memories of you know he sees the memories of Goku destroying Kid Buu with the spirit bomb and then he's like okay I see so you know when he was destroyed so were my powers since my power went to that side since my powers were with him the god power itself and then Goku's like wait a minute you mean to tell me that you know, that little guy had actual god power in him. And at that point, you have to ask yourself, well, why didn't Goku just remember that Kid Buu's resurrected? He's alive, right? And it's like you said, sometimes it takes him a while to remember. And at that point, you have to argue, I guess the answer to my own question would be, that's just Goku, right? He's pretty forgetful sometimes. He's, you know, he's kind of aloof sometimes. In the heat of the moment, he'll just remember something just like that. Like, wait a minute, 
you know, <laughs> this kid's alive. Let's go get him. I can sense his chi right now or whatever. You know what I mean? And then they, they meet him and then maybe the die cow can just extract the actual god power itself. Not making Oob weaker, but just it, it, theoretically it should be residing within him, right? If you think about it. So at that point, you have to ask yourself, well, yeah. Then they come back and, you know, Vegeta's just, Vegeta is the one fighting Moro. Goku just doesn't have much replacement in this fight other than we see UI Omen. He loses, Vegeta comes in, he's fighting Moro to a stalemate, Moro can't absorb his power, he's potentially absorbed everybody else's, and it's still not enough to really put down Vegeta for the fight. Maybe uh, Moro was weaker than Vegeta before that, he absorbs everybody's power, and Chi and Genki and all this other stuff, and now he's fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vegeta. Vegeta's holding his own, and it's like, it's like a stalemate, kind of like the Kid Buu arc where, you know, that's exactly that's basically just like that right and 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 then at that point you have to ask yourself okay now that the daikao has his energy his god power back vegeta has to like hold him or something because if you really if you remember moro dared the daikao to do your worst he was like go ahead fire off the attack but he already knew he had said i sense something different about you and you know you no longer have that ability to seal my my magic way do you and something that i because i was actually reading the manga i went back and read a few chapters and when we first see Moro on the spaceship with, I think it's with Cranberry, he explains to Cranberry that he was, um, his life would have surely expired had his magic not returned to him. And then it's referenced that he got it just a few years ago. Now, a few years ago, it's not verbatimly stated how many years ago it was, but you'd have to assume it's around the time Kid Boom was destroyed. And if that's the case, if the sealing, if that seal specifically is dependent on the user being alive, or I don't know, maybe because Kid Buu was destroyed and th thus the god power was destroyed, therefore the magic returned to Moro, and Moro was able to like, you know, still have some, you know, uh, some 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 lifespan available to him. I don't know, like, we can only assume that. It's kind of headcanon to suggest that, but because it's not definitively stated to my knowledge at least, but we can only assume that that's the case. And with that in mind, you know, you have to say, well, if Vegeta is enough to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Moro, I think that's fine, and then ultimately, boom, that's how they introduce Oob, right? The Dai Kao, you know, Goku remembers, wait a minute, I've resurrected. I asked King Yama to do me a favor. I asked him to resurrect Kid Buu. Do you think the God power would be in him if if it was with Kid Buu and since I destroyed him? But if he's resurrected, shouldn't he have the God power? Oh, okay, let's go find out. And then they Kai Kai to him, you know, and then boom, he extracts the God power. And hell, if they wanted to just pull a GT and just merge, like they could always do that too. I, I don't see that being likely. But it is possible, right? <laughs> you can only hope, you can only wonder. It's like more like a what if, if anything. Yeah, at that point, that's like the be that's the most logical way to introduce him. And then they defeat Moro, and then we have like a slice of life kind of arc or and going forward. Maybe they could just go do the world tournament thing again. Um, but I don't see Goku leaving though, because he has way too much to look forward to. And Vegeta just got stronger. I don't think Goku would just want to leave again just to train some other kid while Vegeta's training on his own because Goku still wants to be you know stronger than everybody that exists right he wants to fight against strong people so there's still Beerus that works we need to see a rematch with Beerus and there's still Vegeta Vegeta is theoretically stronger than Goku and if Goku only has access to UI Omen you have to help but wonder well maybe we can get a sparring match between Goku and Vegeta at this point or something of that nature but I think ultimately that is the most logical way to introduce Oob finally and then they can just give us a slice of life arc and then take it from there. Okay, see, the slice of life stuff, I really don't mind because they could ultimately give us a narrative to where Goku's actually helping Oob out in his village. I think that would be pretty cool. And then they could ultimately give Oob the opportunity to interact with some of the other characters like Gohan, Piccolo. How awesome would it be to see Piccolo actually take Oob under his wing and spar with him a little bit, kind of take him onto 17's island, you know, just allow Oob to feel a little bit natural here but in terms of raw power i think that the way this could ultimately go down is that i could kind of see goku bringing oob to beerus's planet and training him there versus on kami's lookout or the hyperbolic time chamber only because i think it would be really interesting to see Whis watch goku train this kid and then to have beerus just stumble on by and meeting oob for the first time and asking well who the hell is this brat you know like nobody told me that this is going to be something to where you guys can just bring who Whoever you want on my planet so i would like to see that and it's very interesting because we've seen other characters be able to rival super saiyan blue before not saying that oop can but i think with the proper training he could and what i wanted to know from you is do you see goku basically leaving with oob in training him and thus 
giving someone else leeway to carry the show like Vegeta or perhaps someone else, and do you think this concept is only going to be adapted in the manga and not in the anime, or do you think that whatever ends up happening in the manga is ultimately going to be just basically reflected onto the anime but in a different way? Yeah, I mean, they could do that. I, I, I mean, I've always thought that Dragon Ball Super is not Dragon Ball Z, we're not going to see the end of Z kind of thing happen, but it is possible. You know, I'm always willing to accept and acknowledge that things are possible, especially when it comes to Dragon Ball. So, Dragon Ball Super especially, because Dragon Ball Super tends to be wonky sometimes, um, it, it, and it really has a bad habit of not explaining things in full detail, so we could only, we're could only we only left to assume and speculate, kind of like what we're doing now. Uh, but it's for sure it's possible. Uh, would I like it? Sure. I think it's a good way to end it, right? I mean, this arc was pretty damn good, I would say. But at the same time, there's still a lot left for Goku and Vegeta to do. It would be really unfortunate that with no return of the anime, as far as we know, to just end off the manga as well. In my opinion, I'm, I'm a big fan. I think animes and I think anime brands tend to do a lot better um, in the long run, especially when the manga goes on for X amount of chapters and then the anime is like really behind. And then they just incorporate what's ha what happens in the manga into the anime. Things like Attack on Titan, other animes as well, but what, what comes off the top of my head is stuff like My Hero Academia, Attack on Titan. And I'm not, I'm not comparing these animes to Dragon Ball specifically. I'm only comparing the way they handle them and the way they execute them. They generally just take things from the manga and they stay true to it to, I mean, uh, as much as they can. And, and, and I think reading the manga, like if you were to read this more arc, start from the beginning, look at Jocko, look at Vegeta's training, look at Goku and all this other stuff, like Goku sparring with Maris and all these other things. I mean, think about that being animated. Think about actually seeing Goku and, Mar and Maris spar with each other and then they cut off to Vegeta. Right, and they actually add some extra stuff because you know manga panels are just manga panels. But to create like a twenty to twenty-two minute episode, you have to add a little extra in there, like interactions with people, interactions with Goku and Maris, Vegeta and the Yard uh, on Planet Yardrad, so on and so forth. So at that point, it's very much possible. Um, I can't really say for certain if that's going to be the case, but would I like it? Probably not. I think manga should just continue to go forward. I, I think they should just keep pumping stuff out, and then hopefully. Once the anime returns, if it does, I, I really hope they just stay true to the manga as much as possible and not deviate too much because that's one of the biggest problems with Super with Super's anime is that they deviated from from things that were happening in the manga and the manga was behind, you know, so that's another problem. But I, I think at this point, the manga would be ahead and they'd have to like start the anime over with the Broly arc, then eventually make their way into the Mora arc and then do what you suggested, which is give us the end of Z, but in Super. Uh, but I honestly don't see Goku just leaving. That would be that would suck pretty bad. <laughs> so we'll see. Now, do you think that with Dadai Kaio referencing the fact that half of his power was basically split after Majin Buu's departure, do you believe that going forward they're actually going to give Oob somewhat of Dai Kaio like god power or Dai Kaio like god energy to where he could compete against Goku and Vegeta? Because there's no way that I think without proper and long training from Goku or Vegeta or someone else could Oob even hold a candle to Super Saiyan God or even Super. Super Saiyan Blue, right? He's not Broly. So, do you think that with that concept in mind, it would only be best for him to have God Key be passed down from that original split, or do you think that Oob is just going to be a regular kid and naturally grow stronger through training alone? Well, it's not the same. Like, uh, I don't think they reference it as like as God Key. It's more so just God Power, and I think they choose that wording specifically for a reason. Like, uh, I mean, if you think about it. It might have been ref it, it probably would have been referenced at this point if that were the case. Like, because Goku says that little guy had actual god power hiding in him or like residing with it, you know, within him, and that's it. It's like deep within. It's not something you can actually just pick up or sense right off the bat. I mean, unless it's just a plot hole, and unless it's just something that they just decide to just implement. And this entire time, Kid Buu had that power within him, he just couldn't really utilize it. So you kind of understand where it just creates a lot of like. At that point, it's just like one massive red because at that point, Kid Buu could have just been, you know, fighting Super Saiyan God Goku for anything. I don't know. Because <laughs> considering Majin Buu is over here fighting Moro a few chapters ago, right? Um, but yeah, ultimately, as far as like Broly, no, Broly and Ubu won't ever replace Goku and Vegeta. And they're just one of those characters that, in my opinion, I think at least, they're just characters that you put in the closet and then you bring them back out. For specific arcs, for, uh, for specific arcs, it's the, it's the same thing that they, they, it's the same thing they do with Gohan now. It's the same thing they do with Trunks. They've done it with Trunks multiple times. They bring him back, and they and we just forget about him. So they're just one of those characters where they're here and then they're gone. Um, and even if Oob is a part of the gang, 
Like if Oob just hangs out with everybody and stays with everybody, again, he's it's really difficult to gauge because again, Goku and Vegeta have so much left to do. And then you have Beerus there, you have Whis hanging out. I mean, we just got Maris, who we really didn't need too much of, but though he was enjoyable to watch, like he was enjoyable to see on the manga and stuff like that. It was really cool. The, the way he was executing against Moro and stuff like that was really enjoyable to see. And it made the arc a lot more fun and it, it, it i think it made people more acceptable and looking and look more forward to seeing new faces and i think that's where oob's role kind of fits in here as far as him being like a major you know w like a major character going forward i personally don't see it only because of what we what we've gotten for uh, over the course of dragon ball history so far we haven't really got much of him he's not really someone that you can market too much i don't, I don't know how the fan base really you know uh, feels about him people want to see him and I think that's mainly because people just want to see someone new and they want to see someone new in action and I think you know I- implementing you know Moro's henchmen seeing what they can do guys like Sadambo now for example um, and then you have especially 7-3 I think people really responded well to him positively to him and now potentially Oob so I don't know we'll see uh, but for sure not I, I, Broly and Oob won't ever replace Goku and Vegeta you know, th- right now they're just I mean you go to like any convention you go to like any event you see Goku and Vegeta. When the Dragon Ball Super Broly announcement was made, I mean, Broly was in the background. <laughs> you know, even though it was called Dragon Ball Super Broly, Broly was in the background. Goku and Vegeta were the main unit, the main characters on the cover, and then Broly was just, like, faded in the back with, like, a spa- with a Saiyan pod. You know, so things like that, even though it, it, it's cool to see, they won't milk them to that... I, I, don't, I don't see them milking them, these people, that much, these characters that much. Ultimately, it's about Goku and Vegeta, and I think it's going to stay that way. In terms of seeing Oob in action against Sagambo or anybody else, I really don't see that to be the case because, number one, it really wouldn't make any sense because Oob, at this point, I think is very weak. I don't think Oob has any sense of direction without Goku, of course, but I really want to see more from Oob. I think if they're going to not include Oob in the next arc, then definitely the arc actually after the next, I think it's about time they introduce Oob. I think it's about time they go into the ending of Dragon Ball Z. I'm not sure if people agree or disagree with that, but drop your thoughts in the comment section below on how you guys personally feel about this. And again, thank you all so much for your time. Let me know in the comment section below as to how you guys want to see Ubi introduced and when exactly would you guys like to see him in the next arc, in the moral arc, perhaps maybe in a movie. Drop your thoughts in the comment section below. Again, thank you all so much for your time. If you guys enjoyed the video then be sure to hit this video up with a big thumbs up by slapping that like button down below as well as hitting that subscribe button down below and turning on all notifications that way you guys can never miss a single upload on the channel tune back in for the next video check out emma's channel i will leave his link down below and i'll be seeing you all down in the comment section below have a great day everybody Peace. And the quick little reminder before you guys go, if you guys are unaware, I do have a second gaming channel located down in the description box below. So be sure to head on over to Unreal Royale and hit that subscribe button along with turning on all notifications as to there, you guys will find all different kinds of gaming content that you will not get to find on Unreal and Gaming, titles and video games such as Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, Gears of War, Dragon Ball Z Dokkan Battle, Dragon Ball Z Legends, Dragon Ball Z Budokai Tenkai, G3, Minecraft, Blair Witch, and many other retro games on that channel. So if you guys are into gaming, then make sure you guys subscribe over on Unreal Royale. I want to thank you all so much for your time, and I'll catch you all in the next one. This is the Galactic Emperor of the Universe, and of course I'm here to tell you to subscribe to Unrelent Gaming. Also follow Unrelent Gaming on these social media platforms to stay connected at all times. And if you don't, then very soon you will all be dead! (laughs) <laughs> oh, did someone say unrelent gaming? Oh my god. The fuck, Zabon? Put on some clothes! Well, why don't you put on any clothes? What? I don't need clothes! But, uh, Jesus Christ, that's huge! <laughs> what, Broly? Freezer. Uh oh. Prepare to die! <laughs> <laughs> that I'm the biggest Unreal Engine gaming fan. This is my moment. I'm a part of his notification squad. Universe 7 can have all the fun. I just want the food. And don't forget to leave a comment on this video. Show some love for the best community on YouTube. <laughs> K- 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 K-